What? SpaceX Starlink is sold out and there's a waiting list again? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of focus and misty morning combination. So good. The Zing, the Bergamot. Love it. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today's technology day. We're gonna be talking about SpaceX, SpaceX Starlink, and what the heck is going on over there? There's a waiting list again? I thought we were past that. Well, it looks like they have oversold the service yet again. The sheer number of people that are coming on board every month is just unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. SpaceX needs to get that Starship operational to a point where it can start delivering the version three Starlink satellites into orbit. They are four times the size, but 10 times the capacity. So every one of those new, larger SpaceX Starlink satellites is going to make a big difference in the amount of connectivity that can be provided. Once again, 10X for each one of them. Every one of the satellites is the equivalent of 10 current satellites. But according to what we're reading here, there's gonna be some people that will have a problem with getting service as of right now. They will need to go onto a waiting list like I had to. My waiting list was a long one, an extremely lengthy one. It was nine months, guys. I put in my $99 and then I waited and I waited and I waited nine long months until finally I ended up with SpaceX Starlink Generation 2 just coming out of beta. It's been about 36 to 40 months or so that I've had the service. Fantastic service. That's why I started doing these videos for you guys. Matter of fact, if you want more coverage, more content about SpaceX Starlink, I put together about almost 370 videos just for you. I'll put a link over here. Don't click on it yet. Click on that link, all right? You'll be able to go through all the helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to buy, what not to buy, what to do, what not to do, and of course, the why behind all of it. This channel's always been about the why. And if you enjoy the content, throw it a thumbs up. That's very helpful. Don't forget to share it with your friends, family, colleagues, Reddit, Facebook, wherever. Share the channel, share the video. That is very helpful. Also, if you haven't subscribed, consider doing so. If you are, I appreciate that. Click this little notification button over here so when I go live when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Immediately, if not sooner. And if you want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button down there. You can give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. The video is still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And finally, if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out over at jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. So now that the housekeeping is complete, I'm going to jump into this article. I will give you my commentary. And then finally, I want to hear from you down below. And if you're too shy, you don't want to put something down there, put an emoji down there. I don't care what kind of emoji. You could put a poop emoji. I'm okay with it. Whatever turns you on. But just put something down there so that I know that you're actually here and you listened and you watched. And I'm not just talking to a camera. SpaceX Starlink's success story is reaching a new chapter with some growing pains along the way. A year after removing its waitlist, SpaceX satellite internet service is sold out in major U.S. cities like Seattle, Portland, Austin, Texas, as well as internationally in places like London. This rapid saturation reflects SpaceX Starlink's near 5 million global users, a testament to its appeal in both rural and urban areas. Absolutely the fact. Originally, it was all rural areas, right? If you didn't have access like myself to high-speed internet like cable or fiber, SpaceX Starlink was the best thing out there, period right? Forget about Viasat and HughesNet and all the rest of them. AT&T's U-verse, AT&T's DSL, all that garbage compared to SpaceX Starlink. That's why we ended up getting it. Once again, we didn't have fiber nor cable. The article continues. With over 6,600 active satellites in orbit and more launching every week, the network is evolving quickly. 
Yet challenges like regional congestion have led to a $100 congestion charge in some areas, while waitlisted customers can secure a spot with a $99 deposit, those willing to pay for the Starlink Roam can bypass the queue. So what that all translates into, $99 like me, you can get onto the waitlist. But if you don't want to do that, you can go with the Roam plan. It's a little bit more expensive. They'll get into that in just a second. But you can go with the Roam plan and bypass that waiting list. It continues. However, this roaming service designed for an on-the-go internet access may experience reduced speeds in crowded zones. And it's $165 per month charge compared to $120 makes this option certainly not a good fit for many potential customers. So once again, you can get on the waiting list for $99, but if you want to bypass that waiting list, well, instead of getting residential, which is saturated or sold out, out, you can get the roaming plan where you might get a little bit of degraded service, a little bit slower service when there is, let's say, peak time going on or when there is saturation in your area happening, but you're also going to pay a surcharge. It is $165 a month compared to $120 for residential. Keep that in mind. SpaceX has conducted over 100 launches this year alone, with most dedicated to expanding Starlink's coverage. Recent upgrades include 283 satellites equipped with direct-to-cell or DTC communication, hinting at broader ambitions beyond home internet. These developments underscore the growing demand for high-speed internet access, no matter where the users are located on the planet. SpaceX Starlink's explosive growth and congestion issues highlight its success and the challenges of meeting global demand. With millions connected and more satellites on the way, the future of satellite internet is both promising and complex. So, the takeaway here is that yes, SpaceX Starlink is sold out in some areas, that is nationally and internationally. It just cannot keep up with the explosive growth that it's seeing. Once again, 5 million customers before the end of this year. It is over 4 million as of right now. They hit 4 million, I think it was September of this year. And they're looking at 5 million by the end of the year. That is just crazy. You're looking at a million people in just like three, four months. It's absolutely nuts. It is exponential growth, what's going on with SpaceX Starlink. And understand that it's not just users like you and I, it's also government, it's airlines, it is the boating industry. It doesn't matter if it's yachts, cruise liners, or possibly ships that are delivering product, cruise ships, whatever. They're all using SpaceX Starlink today. They're all moving to that Iridium and all the rest of these geocentric satellites that are up there in geo at 36,000 kilometers. Compare those to these Starlink satellites that are at 530 kilometers. The speeds are much, much faster and the latency is just a tenth of what the latency is with those geo satellites. So it is a big, big business and it is booming. Once again, 5 million people. Just to get an understanding here, SpaceX Starlink is looking at, Elon is looking at 42,000 satellites in orbit. That's what the goal is. Currently, there's about 7,000. They say about 6,600. I think it's closer to 7,000 now. That's a lot of satellites, but <laughs> it's not a lot in comparison to six times more is what they're looking for to get to that magic number, 42, 43,000 satellites. I can't even imagine. Right now, they're able to handle approximately 50 terabytes of data per day, 50 terabytes. But when Starship is online and they're able to deliver those version three satellites like I've talked about in the last couple of months, once those version three satellites are up in orbit, they're gonna be lower instead of 530 kilometers, they'll be down at about 470, 450, 420, right around there. They're gonna be faster, they're going to have less latency. And then of course, they are four times the size, but 10 times the capacity. Meaning that those version three satellites are the equivalent to 10 of the current satellites, the version two minis that they're launching. So it is a big deal. Once we see the Starship being able to shoot out those version three satellites out of its Pez dispenser, 
everything is going to change. There will be no more sold out areas. There will be no more areas where there'll be a fluctuation in speed. The speeds will just be fast all the time and the latency will come down also. Generally, latency is at about 30 to 50 milliseconds for most people. I'm fortunate, I'm using a pop out of Miami about 70 miles away. We used to be connected to a pop in Georgia, 700 miles away, so a 10th of the distance. My pings, my milliseconds, my latency is right around 15 to 20 milliseconds. I know, it is really, really good. It used to be 30 to 40 milliseconds, but having that pop, that point of presence so close to me really made a big difference. So anyways, guys, this is good news and bad news. It's good news because we're seeing that SpaceX Starlink is just booming. And if you are a SpaceX Starlink user, you are going to get the benefits of that as time goes on. But if you are a user or a potential user in these sold out areas with high congestion, because there's not enough throughput on those satellites coming by because there's so many people using the service, well, you're stuck for a short period of time if you do not want to pay up for the roaming plan. Now, what is my suggestion? My suggestion is, is if you're in a sold out area, all right, and you still want SpaceX Starlink, get the roaming plan. I know it's $165 a month compared to $120 a month, and you might get a little bit slower service. But chances are, if you need or want SpaceX Starlink, you probably are not gonna care as much about that small bit of money in comparison to actually having broadband in an area that is rural, like we are here on five acres in the middle of nowhere. It's important to us, all right? So that would be my suggestion. The reason, let's always have to give you the why, the why behind it is because SpaceX makes it very easy for you to migrate from plan to plan to plan. So once you're out of that sold out area or the congestion area, and now there's more satellites overhead, you could just simply migrate from a roaming plan to a residential plan. Okay, no problem. You can do that and you can go back and forth. The only thing that you end up having to do is have that service for a full month. So my suggestion is, is if you're going to change services, wait until the end of your payment plan and just before you renew, then change, all right? This way you get all of that service, that coverage, my suggestion. Anyways, guys, I hope you found this information helpful, maybe entertaining. If you did, throw it a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Don't forget to share this video and the channel with your friends, family, colleagues, and everyone that you can find help grow the channel, I would appreciate that. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the many years and my merch and my tees and my shirts and my books and everything else. Take a look at jchristina.com. If there's something there that appeals to you, consider picking up and help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.